This is between 8th and 9th Street. Um, so one block stretch to the, directly to the east of the uh, one that was ordered in. Hasn't been constructed yet, but ordered in. So looking at the project need, um, we do have six inch water main installed on this as well as sanitary sewer on this avenue. Most of our avenues don't have sewer and water on it because they're served off of the, the street side, but this particular one, we already have the, the sewer and water in uh, installed in there and so that's uh, in decent shape. We do have storm sewer installed in the intersections to, to catch the, the runoff. Uh, this is a gravel surface currently um, and this was petitioned by 50% of the owners. So the proposed improvements that we're looking at this, uh, this stretch is a 32 foot urban street. Um, so that'll be curb and gutter, three and a half inches of blacktop, five inches of gravel, and then we would do a subcut uh, in this area to make sure that the, the road lasts as long as we can, uh, can make it last. Uh, we would extend the storm sewer to the alley, uh, so about 200 feet to the west is what we would extend it so that if those alleys ever get constructed uh, or extended, then uh, we'd be able to intercept that storm sewer at that point and, and get that drainage taken care of as well. Looking at the project costs, um, the construction we're projecting it to be $138,381. Uh, with 10% contingency and then engineering coming in at $12,178 for a total project of $164,397. Assessments, uh, we are looking at uh, $8,328 uh, for assessments, so just right, right around that 5% mark, the remaining would be picked up uh, by the city. Again, the total uh, would be that $164,397. Looking at the project rate, uh, these are all side footages, so they'd be at that $13.88 per foot. Again, that number is gonna be dependent upon what the actual bid prices and the actual project prices come in at, uh, but that that's what we're projecting at this point in time. Looking at the next steps for the, uh, for the project tonight, March 16th, we do have the public improvement hearing. Uh, if this moves forward, we'd, look in, we'd be looking at design in April, and then April and May, we'd be advertising for bids with opening it in uh, middle of May and construction happening this summer uh, with completion probably uh, towards the mid to late summer with our special assessment hearing uh, between June and October when that's uh, finalized. Uh, so we're looking at uh, basically this summer season. That's the project in a nutshell. Um, any questions on, uh, on the project itself? This was a project we were going to do but then the summer kind of put us off. So there was, um, if you go back to the, if I can go back to the first one here, this is one that we, um, we had approved last summer. We did not get the plans and specs pulled together for that one. And so we still have it on the, the books to do it this year. Um, so that one has already moved ahead. But this is the next one basically just to the east. So if you look at this map up here, I know it's hard to see green on green. The one that was approved is this stretch right here with the alley, and this one is one block to the east um, to okay. continue that paving section. In that southwest part of town, there's a number of uh, gravel streets over in there. This is one of those stretches that we'd be looking at uh, converting that over to blacktop. I will note that um, I did get a letter in uh, approval of it, and I can read it here. Um, we are writing in regards to public improvement number 383, as we are unable to attend the public hearing on March 16th. We are in favor of this improvement project and welcome the positive change to our neighborhood. Um, and that was Joe and Bonnie uh, Bachin that sent that one. Okay, we'd be the, to the point where we receive public comment. If you'd like to speak, please just raise your hand. I'll acknowledge you. You could come to the podium and give us your name and address and you'd have two minutes. Would anyone like to speak? Please. Hi, Mary Bednark. I live on, on 9th, or 8th Avenue and 9th Street on the corner there. And we are wondering if, we have a garage in the backyard that we were wondering if the driveway entrance is gonna to have to be a certain size or can we make it larger because we park like our camper and another trailer back there? 
So usually what we do is we match what is currently there. Um, I don't know specifically what you have, if you've got a gravel or if you've got a blacktop or if you've gravel. got concrete. So normally what we'll do is we'll have the, the curb and gutter and then we'll do a, a concrete apron, which usually extends about three to four feet back. Uh, and then we'll match the width to whatever driveway you've got there currently. Um, and then if it's a gravel driveway, we'll match, you know, we've got to tie that in with gravel. If it's blacktop, we'll, we'll repair that with blacktop and so on and so forth. So we match what you currently have um, at that location. Okay, thank you. Excuse yep. me, Mary, could you please give your address? Oh, 903 Lilac Lane. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? John, did we receive any emails from your um, notice today? <clears throat> No, I have not received any messages. Okay. I did have one other individual come in. Um, because of the, the drainage that they have in their yard, they were opposed to the, to the project. Uh, their drainage is a little bit farther back, so I, I told them we would look to see if we could um, correct that drainage, but I couldn't guarantee that we could or not. So they were opposed to it just because we weren't, they weren't sure if that would fix the problem or not. Uh, in their situation, but we do have storm sewer coming up to the alley, stubbed out, um, so that if that alley does ever go forward, we can address it at that point. But um, they were opposed to it because we could, they weren't sure if that was gonna fix that drainage problem at that point. Thank you. Yep. We will close our hearing at 741. What is the wish of the council? Mr. President, I'll make a resolution to adopt uh, resolution 2020-21. Second. Motion by Council Member Hansen, second by Council Member Lundberg. Any discussion? Resolution, call a roll, please. Wildegren? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Kirkock? Yes. Storley? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Gushik? Yes. Carries. And so seven, well, it's still 741. We'll open our next public hearing for uh, public hearing improvement 383 continued for resolution 2020-22. So this is the non-petitioned uh, segment of the, uh, of the project that we're looking at, uh, staff initiated. Um, we do have the affidavit of publication as well as the affidavit of mailing the notices. Um, if you recall, uh, this stretch is the one that was uh, moved forward last year, didn't get constructed, but we're, we'll be including that with the plans. This is the one that we just talked about, um, so we'll get plans started for this section as well. The next section that we're looking at is just to the east and north of that. So uh, if I can point up here, right here is the one that we just got done having the public hearing for. This is the stretch that uh, was approved last summer, and so we're looking at four other blocks within uh, that, that section of town to convert over to uh, curb and gutter. So those are 6th Avenue Southwest between 7th and 9th Street, 7th Avenue Southwest between 8th and 9th Street, and then 8th Avenue Southwest between 7th and 8th, 8th Street. Looking at the project need, um, in the project area on those uh, four segments, there's no sewer, there's no water uh, currently in there. Those are all served off of the street side of it. Uh, storm sewer was installed in the, at the intersections uh, along 7th and 8th Avenue. And then there's gravel surfacing on these, and again, this is a staff initiated uh, project. Again, the improvements would be a 32 foot urban street, curb and gutter, uh, three and a half inches of blacktop, five inches of, of aggregate base, and then the subcut in that area to, to prolong that, uh, that pavement. Storm sewer would be extended to the alley on 6th Avenue between 7th and 8th Street, again, to try to pick up that, uh, that low point. Looking at the cost for the project, uh, we are looking at construction uh, $479,581 with contingency uh, at $47,958. Engineering, legal, and fiscal will be 42,203 is what we're projecting for a total project cost of $569,742. Looking at the assessments uh, for this, uh, we're at about 5.8% assessments, uh, so we're at $33,312 assessed with the city picking up the remainder um, for a total project cost of 569742 Again, uh, just like the previous one, these are all side footage uh, assessments, so they're at the, the $13.88. That rate will be dependent upon what the actual uh, bid prices would be, so if we get higher or lower bid prices, that would, uh, would get adjusted based on, on that. 
similar um, schedule as to the previous one where tonight, March 16th, we've got the public improvement hearing. We're looking at design and then going out for advertisement for bids in April and May um, with opening bids in May with, and council approval and then construction this summer uh, to be con completed in the fall of 2020 and then finally having our, uh, our final assessment hearing. Any questions on this stretch? With the percent that's accessible to property owners with both of these? Yep. We wouldn't be doing any financing for these? Do we so have funds what available? What we would likely do is we would combine these with other projects. Uh, we have Sunrise 3 that we are currently in that same process of working through. Um, so we would combine it with that project to be able to bond for, uh, for the improvements. That'll meet our 20% requirement. Okay. Mr. President, do you have an individual assessment amount, or don't don't you have that? I do. Off the, I can get it. It was just over two thousand um, dollars. I can get to the exact dollar amount here in a second. And all of them were the same because they got the same uh, footage. Two thousand eighty-two dollars per parcel. Would anyone like to speak in regards to this part of the? Did you receive any mail or any electronic Just those, comments? Those two from the previous one are, are this consistent with this one as well. Okay. Then we will close our public hearing at 746. What is the wish of the council? I move to uh, adopt resolution 2020-22, order in surface and or utility improvements 6th, 7th, and 8th Avenues Southwest. Second. Second. Oh. Motion by Council Member Lundberg. Uh, second by Council Member Liljegren. Sorry, I was hearing you both out of <laughs> each year pretty equally. That's any, right. any discussion? Resolution, call a roll, please. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Hercock? Yes. Storley? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Gushik? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Carries. Bloodings, update obsolete utility billing meter reading equipment, Ferguson Waterworks. Lori? Um, yes, as we discussed in the work session, um, we purchased our automated meter reading system back in 2014 um, through Ferguson Waterworks. Uh, since we made the original purchase, we have done no upgrades to the software um, or the MIUs. Working with the system now, we definitely need to do something um, to the software to upgrade it. Microsoft Office is phasing out the Adobe Flash, which is something that runs in the background that allows the uh, software to run and, and work effectively. In discussion with Ferguson Waterworks, um, we discussed with them upgrading what we have or migrating to a, their newer system, which is the R900 system. In that discussion, Ferguson um, indicated they would supply and install two new data collectors, which would be required to run the R900 system. Our cost would be the hosted software, so it's a software upgrade and then them hosting it. Um, year one is $9,450, year two, $11,445, and in year three, $13,475. In addition to that, we would be um, purchasing a belt clip at a cost of $2,500, and the belt clip is um, a tool that the installer would use to ensure that we have good installs when we're wiring the MIUs up to the meters. So what we are looking for um, from the council tonight is to award that quotation in the dollar amounts I indicated, um, which would migrate us to the R900 collector system. What is the wish of the council? <clears throat> I'll make a motion to update obsolete. Utility billing, meter reading equipment. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Council Member Liljegren, second by Council Member Storley. Any discussion? Yes, yeah, yeah. so I think it's an opportune time because we are doing work on the water tower and it would be a good time to get that all changed over. And, uh, and like uh, Lori was saying in the work session, We'd like everything to last 20 years. I'd like to buy a computer today and think it's gonna be good until I'm finished on this earth, but the reality is I'm gonna probably have to buy five, six, seven, eight more in the meantime, and everything changes. 
and the support system changes. Uh, when something becomes obsolete, they no longer will support it, and then to keep it functional after that, it's almost impossible, so it's probably a good time. Mr. President, um, I see in here uh, you have it where it's gonna be um, charged out one half to the water operating and one half to the wastewater. Is it, this has been budgeted in, into their budget? Or? No, it hasn't been budgeted. At the time we set budgets last year, we didn't know where we were going to go, what what exactly needed to happen. Um, so it is not a budgeted item. However, both of the funds have sufficient reserves and, and operating revenues to cover that. What is the wish of the council? I think it's already been motioned. And a motion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we're, that's correct. Sorry. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Engineer, final design work. Westwood Engineering, Sunrise Edition 3. Greg. I'm gonna jump back one for you. Um, the water modeling for Short LX Anderson, number two. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm messing myself up. I wrote in the wrong spot before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, water okay. system modeling. So we went over proposals. We received two proposals for our water system modeling. Um, Short Elliott Hendrickson came in as the low proposal in the amount of $15,400 to do water modeling. To give you some history on uh, the project itself, we've been getting some complaints about um, low pressure in some of the southeast part of town, the, the dead end lines that we've got. And so this year uh, in 2020, we did budget to put a, another river crossing on that south part to take care of that. Um, but what I wanted to do is to, to make sure that by adding that component to our water system that we didn't create some other uh, unintended consequence as far as uh, older water in our system. And so um, we reached out uh, and got proposals from, from firms in order to do this water modeling. And short, Elliot Hendrickson came in at the low quote of $15,400. So tonight we are recommending approval uh, to complete that, uh, that modeling for the city. What is the wish of the council? Move to award the water system modeling to Short Elliott Henderson. Second. Motion by Council Member Storley, second by Council Member Hansen. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Now, engineer, final design work, Westwood Engineering, Sunrise Edition 3. So, so we are working with the developer in regards to uh, Sunrise 3. Uh, we reached out to engineering firms to get proposals on that uh, final design up in, up in there. It's about a 37 um, parcel uh, development that they're looking at. Um, we received two proposals for it. Uh, Westwood was the low proposal in the amount of $32,855. And so we are recommending approval of that uh, proposal as well um, to Westwood Engineering for Sunrise 3. What is the wish of the council? Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the engineer final design work for the Sunrise Edition 3. I'll second it. Motion by Council Member Hanson, second by Council Member Goshek. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. No old business, new business. Position descriptions, points and pay grades. Golf course, John. Thank you, Council President. Um, as we've approached this season, we've had to make some changes within the personnel at the golf course. Uh, we. Prior to this season, we had Dale Branchad, who was the assistant golf course superintendent. Um, he handled ma majority of the work, all, the, well, all of his work was outside on the course. Um, so he handled the, overseeing a lot of the staff and the operations for the grounds crew. And Rich handled most of the management of the interior stuff on the inside, but he also had some pest, he had the pesticide applicators license. So he handled some of the spraying components on the, on the exterior work. Seeing that Dale has uh, since retired at the end of this last year, we have a need to modify how we're uh, arranging those position, um, the utilization of those positions. Rich's skill set really is in the exterior work. That's what he has education for. That's what he has um, all the 
you know, the pesticide applicator's license, he has low, the skills and expertise for, for that outside work. And we would utilize um, him more in that capacity to do that exterior work. One of these positions includes a, uh, a clubhouse, the, the clubhouse supervisor. So it would be promoting somebody up to manage, be much more of that manager for the inside, um, handling a lot more functions with the with the clubhouse supervision. So with that, we've amended some of the job descriptions. Michaela has worked with Rich and and myself and uh, and Lori even with with some of these developments because we just want to bring some more skill sets into that um, into those positions for those interior works. And then with that. On the outside, uh, since a lot of the the grounds crew work happens throughout the course of the day, it's going to be you know extended hours more than what Rich can um, you know manage and supervise himself. He would like to have a person that he has as his designated go to, so that they can handle the crews and directing them if need be when he isn't available. So um, to you know just deliver out those work orders and make sure that somebody's supervising because the rest of the grounds crew um, are not all seasoned, experienced uh, people. Um, the, a lot of them we hire straight out of, out of high school or even still in high school uh, to do some, the menial tasks, uh, picking the range, just the regular grounds work that needs to happen out there. But having somebody that would be dedicated in that position to, to be the supervisor um, we deem is, an, is important. Um, the cook position and then the lead clubhouse attendant are, are really truly just modifications of the job descriptions. Not a whole lot has changed in terms of their total total duties. We're just trying to um, make them more uh, cohesive and understandable for the for the expectations of the jobs that they have. So when we when we did look at that, we associated um, points relative to a point scale that we had for part-time employer employees and graded those out accordingly. So some of them did see some changes in, in terms of where they landed on the on the pay grade. And, um, so with that, as as employees would be coming back into those positions, they would be reassigned into the pay schedule at the point in which they would not receive any decrease in, in pay. So there may be uh, some impacts with that. But as a as a total um, total modification of what we have for these positions, it was something that was considered in the budget budgetary process as we were modifying out. knew knew that Dale was going to retire at the end of last year. We were taking that that full time position and the benefits out of the of the cost budget, and we were implementing in additional costs that we knew we were going to have um, to to supplement the work that he was doing. Um, you know, most of it actually getting redirected on the inside because we knew we were going to take more time away from Rich from the inside work and putting him into the to the outside work. Really, where his um, his you know professional skills uh, and education aligned. So to to answer the budgetary question, it's actually a, a total budget decrease, even though these positions are going to end up end up at higher grades um, as a whole. Um, a lot of them did end up at higher grades. What is the wish of the council? I'll make a motion to approve the position descriptions and pay grades. Second. Motion by council member Goshik, second by council member Lundberg. Any discussion? Yes, I have a question, Mr. President. Uh, so the clubhouse supervisor does that person answer to Rich also? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So he does. He does have the authority over you know direct the the course as a whole, both the inside okay. and outside. As we've hired him to do, that's what his position handles. But his day to day, um, you know, majority of the time that he's spending when he's when he's at work is going to move more outside than it is inside. So he isn't going to be available to be that direct supervisor over staff on the on the inside basis as he has um, for most of the, you know, the time that he's been here mostly. We're trying to align our skills and our and our and our staffing in a, in such a way that, you know, we can we can capitalize on the strengths and, and skill sets of the employees that we have and make sure that we're hiring for the strengths that we don't have. Uh, Mr. President, if I may, John, do we need to look at the golf course manager's job description 
then? Does that need any modification? Um, it is something that we've been looking at now that Michaela is in that HR director role. There's, you know, we have been looking at a lot of position descriptions, um, but when we hired for that position back in the end of 2015, that was, it was definitely something that was looked at and it was always part of the, the manager themselves, the golf course manager. So um, in terms of where, whether it's job description details, 90% um, of your time is outside, 10% of your time is inside, or any sort of ratio like that, I, I don't think that applies, but it definitely identifies skill sets that would be necessary to, to fulfill either role that he was serving at, or the role that he currently will be or the we project him to be serving. Okay, and, and further to that, I, I would just like to suggest that if we switch this around like this, that people out there understand who they're reporting to. Um, I have no inkling on who the clubhouse supervisor might be, but it, we need to make sure that that person identifies, identified, understands, you know, their role as the supervisor for the day-to-day -day operations of the clubhouse and not, you know, just have a, and we're, we're, we're prepared as we're, as when these positions are, if approved, um, we're prepared to, you know, provide existing staff for the interest and opportunities if they're, you know, if they're looking at any of these positions that they let us know, um, and then follow through with determining which the best candidate is for the, that if it can be filled internally, if we do not find a candidate that is capable of doing that internally, we would be opening up the process and filling these externally. It's as, as we're reassessing all of the positions uh, and reassigning all of the positions, um, people that have worked for us in the past, we are you know, giving, some, giving them the opportunity to express their interests if they want to return and if there's a position that, that aligns with them to return to, um, we are going to try to manage that, but no, notably, these a couple of them are significantly different than they were before. So there's going to be a need to you know make sure that those those anybody that would be filling that position has a clear understanding of what it is the job expectations now entail, since they're going to be drastically different than the job and jobs that they served in previously. Are some of these going to have to be filled in of these? There are likely going to be some lower lower positions that we're going to have to fill just from um, staff not returning from previous years and just making sure that we have the right people in the right places. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Letters of support. Number one, legislative funding, Charles Warehouser Museum. John. Thank you, Council President. As you've heard from the last couple meetings that we had, um, we have a couple of uh, nonprofits and um, groups in town that have some actions that they are asking the uh, state legislature for support um, and some funding to implement. Um, you know, heard from a couple weeks ago at the uh, Weyerhaeuser Museum, the County Historical Society for some projects that they're, they're looking at, um, asking for support for, and um, just tonight from Oasis Central Minnesota on uh, a project that they're, they have interest in, in seeing support for uh, to help with um, some emergency housing uh, needs that our community is facing. So um, with that, you know, nothing specifically asking us for funds, but looking for our support in there uh, as, you know, formally from, from the council to advocate uh, at, on behalf of the state legislature. Do they need to be separate or can they be combined as letters of support? Um, if you felt that there was interest in take, addressing them separately, you could. Um, I. I feel since it's not a budgetary interest and if they are both, you, you deem both approved, you could take it as one. Okay, we'll see whoever makes the motion. What is the motion of the council? Okay, that being said, Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve the letters of support uh, for the Charles Weiser Howard Hauser Museum and uh, the Oasis uh, share a meal. I'll second it. Motion by council member Hansen, second by council member Goshik. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
Morrison County Cleanup Day Grant and Recycling Grant Agreements. Accept and approve. John. Thank you, Council President. Um, this falls into line with our discussion that we've been having on glass recycling for much of this year since our, uh, we've adopted our change. Um, I have spoken to the hauler as well as the county about the grant opportunity that we have. The county's interest is to see us do re resume curbside collection of glass and do so um, with all colors, not any sort of separation in that stream. The hauler has, ex has um, has provided that they are willing to do that. We're working on some of the, the management of how that collection is going to take place to help them in the circumstances to eliminate the, the glass contamination. Um, you know, we're, we're glasses. We do have a, we did have the segregated glass collection. However, you know, when it's is in a co-mingled box and it, you know, as you set it out on the curb or things rattle around, sometimes glass gets, um, you know, close to or mixed in with, with other materials. So they're, they're hopeful that we can try to identify a, a, a total separate container like a five gallon pail um, and trying to manage that. So we, we will be working on getting that re-implemented into the system. The county has discussed that if we uh, pass the agreement tonight, they're, on the end, they're understanding that we're trying to work this out and know that it isn't gonna happen you know, tomorrow that we're gonna start collecting glass again, but we are gonna be working on it and working on those details. So they're, they're comfortable with us approving the grant agreement tonight and knowing that we're working on a solution to, to resume curbside collection of glass. And with that, there, in all of our discussions so far, it has been done without, at this time, any sort of increase in that, that rate. Um, but we would be you know, looking at, at understanding what that, that cost impact is gonna be um, throughout the course of this year. But assuming that the, the new grant agreement is a higher rate, we probably could assume Give some of some that of cost that increase this, year, that? this year for sure. What is the wish of the council? Move to approve and accept the Morrison County Cleanup Day Grant and Recycling Grant. Second. Motion by Council Member Storley, second by Council Member Lundberg. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Petition, water and sewer extension, Amber and Clayton Olson receive. Greg. Good evening. This, uh, this evening we were asking you to receive the petition from Amber and Clayton Olson to uh, extend sewer and water uh, to their particular property. So this evening we're just asking for you to receive that petition. What is the wish of the council? I'll make a motion to receive the petition. Second. You don't have to vote when it's just receiving it, correct? Receive Re it. Resolution 2020-23, large scale event license, antiques and collectibles, Westside Improvement Association, adopt. Move to adopt the resolution 2020-23. Yep, they're gonna talk to us a second first though. Hi. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Deb Redka and this is Rosie LeBlau. We are both uh, co-chairs of the West Little Falls Antiques and Collectible Fair and we are here to present our application for our 18th annual fair. And we're there, we don't have any changes. It's the same, same uh, show as we usually have, but if you have any questions, we're here to answer. We won't have a railroad thing this year, so that will help. Okay. That will help, yes. Any questions, anyone? How did it turn out last year with all the construction and? We were down a few with the vendors, but the they all did amazingly well. It was probably one of our best turnouts for um, people coming down. Wow. So they were cool. all very, very pleased with last year. Okay, you can go ahead if you'd like to, Jim. Okay. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll move to adopt resolution 2020-23, the large scale event license for the antiques and collectibles for the West Side Improvement Association. Second. A motion by council member Storley, second by Mayor Zilka. Any discussion? Resolution, call a roll please. Zilka? 
Yes. Kirkock? Yes. Storley? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Gushik? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Resolution 2020-24, Large Scale Event License, Arts and Crafts Fair, Little Falls, Area Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, um, I'm Mary Benarek with the Little Falls Chamber of Commerce and I'm here with Deb Bowles, our CEO President, and we are uh, here to uh, present our application for our 48th Annual Arts and Crafts Fair and 9th Annual Marketplace Fair, which is on the west side of town. Or east side, I'm sorry. No marketplaces on the west side. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, we're just wondering if you had any questions. Did you say 48th? 48th. Wow. I didn't yes. think I was that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of ageless. I remembered the first one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, our, and our vendors did have a good year last year. In January, we send out the applications for renewal. And if you're a returning vendor, you need to return that by March 31st. We were way up in dollars in January already that our vendors were willing to part with their money. So that tells us they had a very good year in 2019. Good, good. that's good. Am I reading this, I'm just going off the top of my head with the total expected number of vendors, 585, yes. isn't that? nearly half from the peak? In, in 97 was the 25th anniversary and there were a thousand vendors and 1400 booth spaces and there was not a fire lane in this town. It was way too much. So this, not, this number is very manageable for us. Our vendors do well. There is still somewhat room to park close into downtown. Um, the internet has impacted street fairs across the country. Vendors just do not need to go out and do street fairs anymore. And our, our, our tell usually is this time of the year because the southern part of the states really start having their craft fairs at this time before it gets too hot. We don't know what impact the coronavirus is gonna have because as vendors call in and talk to us in June, July, how's it going? That's our measuring stick for how they think they're going to do with us. And this year we're not gonna have that measuring stick going into the event. So we're planning to have the event. Uh, if something needs to change, our chamber board will address that. Uh, does rice have much of an impact on, seems like every year they seem to be growing. Uh, they're kind of taking your advertising and using it to their advantage. My, that's my opinion, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, and they were started by the vendors that were juried out of our fair when we had too many vendors and, and they have a lot of buy, sell product. They have their niche market. There are vendors who only wanna see 10,000 people come before them on a weekend. They don't wanna see 120, 100, 125,000 people is too much for them. So they have their niche market as well. It doesn't seem to impact us, I, I don't believe. If vendor, their hours are a little bit longer than ours, they try and catch people on the way home. So they go hour, an hour later than we do each day. It'd be nice if they shared <coughs> the advertising costs. <laughs> yes, it would. Well, the last couple of years, we've gotten a lot of vendors from Rice that wanna come down here now with us. Okay. So. And Mary is the fair registrar, so she's the first line that talks to our vendors, takes their money, does the maps, uh, assigns all the booth spaces. So that's why she's talking tonight instead of me. Thank you. What is the wish of the council? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2020-24 large scale event license for the arts and crafts fair. Second. Motion by Council Member Goshik, second by Council Member Hansen. Any discussion? Resolution, call a roll, please. Kirkhock? Yes. <clears throat> Storley? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Goshik? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. City Council report from <coughs> city authorities, boards, bureaus, commissions, and committees. I can uh, discuss one thing. Uh, Went down for the bike summit, bike and walk summit. Might as well make it correct. There was a lot of discussion uh, 
about the funding for bike trails and, and I went down because of that interest for the Camp Ripley Veterans State Trail. Uh, I also realized there isn't a whole lot of money that the state pushes in that direction, but it probably will be gaining because uh, especially in Minneapolis, they're looking for alternative uh, travels, uh, cut costs, you know, get rid of uh, burning up so much fossil fuel. So in the cities, they have major plans on making bike lanes like almost everywhere, uh, paths and trails uh, so commuters can go in and uh, it's healthier for them, puts less stress on the environment. They're also giving a big push toward the school's incentives to uh, for students instead of driving to school, actually take bicycles. And I gave an example of one school where 60% of the students in the high school end are bicycling to school. And uh, it'd be nice if maybe Little Falls did that, but takes a little work to get that changed over, but in the next four or five years, uh, they're gonna be pushing big time for that across the state, so something maybe we should look into and get prepared. We are on the right track with safe routes to school, and I think we just gotta keep going with it, and it should work out. And there was a lot of no handshaking with the legislators. Uh, a lot of elbow bumping uh, here a little bit. Paranoid about this whole virus thing too. So uh, anyway, so that was just my end. Mr. President, excuse me, I got a tickle in my throat. John, would you please speak about our excitement down at the Capitol for three <laughs> yeah, or sure. four days last week? Um, yeah, so we, um, last week on Monday, we did our, we did have the, um, Hearing with the property and tax committee um, at the for the house, and we're able to introduce and testify on our local option sales tax rep resolution. Um, all in all, I have to say that that went well. Um, type two diabetes, the meat on it. Eating right. In. <laughs> <laughs> that went well. Uh, our the, we were fourth in line. There's three previous cities in front of us: uh, Wadena. Uh, St. Cloud and Waite Park. Uh, the questions that the committee members asked of those seemed very direct to the um, to their projects that they were they were looking to implement using the the local their local option sales tax collection. Uh, when it got to us, then they started asking questions. Um, it seemed to turn more into a generic discussion or generic questions about their their opinions of the local option sales tax. It, not in regards to our project. Um, some of them had some different comments that they, they had uh, based on, on their opinions of, of the measures on local option sales tax. So uh, I, I think that didn't hurt us or harm us in any way, shape, or form relative to their decisions on our project. Um, the feedback that we got afterwards from people in, that have experienced this much more than we have um, was very positive and thought that uh, it went really well. Um, the then on Wednesday we're back again, the mayor and I, for the coalition of Great Minnesota Cities Legislative Action Day. Um, oh, and prior to that, we did have prior to the meeting on our testimony on on Monday, we did have an opportunity to speak with Ron Kresha for Representative Kresha for about a half an hour, uh, and just to talk about the various projects and other things of support that we were looking for in our community. Um, then on Wednesday with the Legislative Action Day, as I you know, mentioned earlier, uh, we did um, heard from the initiatives that the coalition is, is putting forward as, as high priority areas and obviously not a lot of news to us. Child care, wastewater <coughs> projects, wastewater funding, bonding, bonding bill, um, support for local government aid and, the, and um, we're among it, some of the highest um, priority areas that they're they're bringing forward to us the governor was there to speak um, you know spoke to us for about 15 minutes uh, very much on coronavirus and what you know that might lay ahead as I mentioned in the work session at that day it was um, you know we're looking at business as usual with some modifications and trying not to you know trying to engage in social distancing yet still going to take on public business um, schools are still going to remain open for a period of time and they're going to continue to follow the guidelines of the CDC and Minnesota Department of Health. Um, 
you've seen since that that has changed dramatically since from from that day point in time. So um, afterwards, we did have uh, Senator Gazelka, um, Senator. Kent and Representative New, um, they're all part of the leadership of their of their respective parties within each of the, the chambers, and they answered a lot of the questions on, you know, bonding bill, you know, how big is it going to happen, you know, some of the tax conformity issues that that might be impacting the city. So that's really where the priorities area priority areas land. Uh, child care is absolutely a bipartisan. Um, issue if something some if they do pass anything this year there will be something related to child care um, whether or not it's going to be um, they're going to add capital funding I think is a question but there's definitely going to be some support to do some more initiatives to um, helping out with the child care issue and related to um, you know Republicans want to see more changes in regulation and you know, the other parties have, have talked about added dollars towards capital projects, which we've um, been advocating for, as I feel that's in the assessment that I've had in the two years really focusing on this issue that has been a, a, a priority, and I think that would be an, uh, a means to help uh, address some of the child care issues now in light of corona. Let's all things are, are different. Um, so fortunately, afterwards, we were able to meet with Senator Gazelka, um, not as just the mayor and I, but with uh, three other cities, um, or three cities in total in the room, just the way the schedule landed, because he, prior to our scheduled meeting, had a meeting with the governor, a long meeting with the governor to talk about what was going to happen. And then finally, on Friday, um, I was going to go back to the, the to St. Paul. I had I'd been invited to participate as part of the the MPCA's Clean Water Discussion Series for for city representatives. Um, I took took that as a conference call. Um, unfortunately, the governor's announcement was going on at the same time, so a lot of our attention kind of some of our attention got redirected into that, and we didn't spend nearly the the time that we had. Before, but their biggest issue right now is in um, finding ways to support and recruit and uh, advance the profession for wastewater um, operators. And there are some some things that are going on in that regards. And then uh, there's a lot of legislation that we're trying to push forward, even with the coalition, regarding the PFAS issue. Um, these are the forever chemicals, the the things that are are starting to show. You know, we're we're now identifying within. Um, water resources and wastewater resources. There, there are ways to treat for them on the water side. There are no current methods at all to treat for them in the wastewater streams and the wastewater um, issues. So the proposals that we're trying to work with uh, MPCA, and MPCA has been actually very, very supportive of this, is to, to be at, to team up together, uh, municipalities and the MPCA to come up with solutions and present them to the, to the legislature. And that was one of the, um, uh, bills that were coming up that that we're advocating for on the coalition level. That's it. Ends my updates for my week at the Capitol. Thank you. Any announcements? Um, Council President, if I may, just uh, as a, a, again, um, we are continuing to be addressing um, the changes and impacts that coronavirus, COVID-19, are having. The the you know the the peacetime emergency situation that we're in that the governor has um, you know approved or implemented last Friday, uh, and what that what that means. Um, Things are changing daily. They're cha hourly, even, and we are going to address them as they as they change. We are going to do everything in our power to maintain operations at the city as best as we possibly can, with as you know availability for the public to participate as much as we can. Um, we do, you know, in the press release that, that came out today, for those paying utility bills, just a reminder, we have lots of different options. They're all included in the in the press release that, that went out. That's uh, it's on our city webpage. It's on the Facebook page. It's on the in the newspaper in the in the press release. Please look to to taking advantage of those, so you do not have to come into city hall to to expose yourself and or others. Um, fortunately, I, I you know our, our window of safety <laughs> that we had installed last fall, um, you know. Talking about bulletproof glass uh, is really, you know, I think uh, adds a lot of relief for our staff in terms of just being able to to know that they're in a in a place that's somewhat segregated from from the open public. We have been closing off the engineering wing of the building and trying to manage that as well. 
We'll try to, you know, be um, throughout the course of the day, be wiping down door handles and, and public areas um, with disinfecting wipes so that we can handle handle our, our building that we and the work that we do in here. Um, police department as well has their lobby and window that they have open to the public. It will remain open. Um, they it is it is a secured area so that they feel they're they're safe with with having that available. In terms of the rest of the city facilities, um, the golf course is not yet open for for the season. Um, we're working on that and we will have uh, ways to address this. But in light of um, I guess the governor's um, announcement today that that restaurants and businesses are, or bars are going to be closed. That that's probably going to impact the things that are going on with that. So we will be readdressing that and, and issuing you know, formal statements as they come. So I do ask you, as council members, if you are receiving questions or concerns, please, please, please redirect them to to myself so that we can address them as staff in a, in a coordinated response. Um, as I mentioned earlier too in the work session, we have been meeting with the county as well um, it's you know who knows but if emergency management procedures do need are implemented emergency operations are implemented we do have um, the coordination and resources that we'd be working with them so we're trying to come up with our contingency plans we're trying to come up with the um, the means of how we're going to address this if, if staff can't report to work or shouldn't report to work or if we're going to be on reductions or, or sending personnel, um, you know, directing, redirecting personnel to handle um, the crisis or handle the situations in, in whatever way, shape, or form. Um, so know that we're working on it. We don't have everything uh, formally worked out at this time, but we will be um, addressing that as it moves forward. Uh, we will recess to a closed meeting pursuant to Minnesota Statute 13D.05. Subdivision 3C3 to develop a purchase price of property legal described as a part of lot 8. All of lots 12 and 13, subdivision of block 63, Thayer's edition, and lots 9, 10, and 11, block 63 of Thayer's edition. Thank you. Thank you. 